Welcome back to Professor Dr. Virendra Pandey's class on the art of writing argument synthesis essay. The topic that we are dealing today is customary morality cannot be a guide to modernity. This is a very controversial topic. Uh, I'll, I'll explain to you how it is controversial in the next slide. But for now, just remember that it's a controversial topic. And when you are given a topic which is controversial, you are required to uh, write the essay in the, in that, in the genre of uh, argumentative synthesis essay or argumentative essay. You have to check, uh, you have to respect the generic conventions. So, this is our topic. Customary morality cannot be guide to modern life or modernity. This is our topic. And in what sense is it controversial? Is it controversial because uh, its authoritative meaning and its contradictory meaning, both meanings are uh, equally compelling. Equally compelling. Customary morality cannot be a guide or cannot be guide to modern life looks very true. And equally true looks the opposite of it, uh, the contradiction to it. That is, customary morality can indeed be a guide to modern life. So, because of these two contrary positions, this essay uh, becomes controversial and requires you to treat it as a genre of argumentative writing or argument synthesis essay. Uh, there are particular you know ways of doing this and this is where I am taking you to. Section 1. Section 1 uh, talks about approaches, approaches to a position argument. Before you take a position, uh, before you try to understand the statement, before that, uh, you must know, you must be familiar with position argument. You must be uh, you must know things that you should keep in mind as you read a position argument statement. And the first thing in this familiarity, uh, first thing is the feature. What are the features of a position argument? So, a, a position argument takes or engages, takes up a controversial issue, engages with a controversial issue. This is the first thing that you have to keep in mind. And when we say a controversial issue or a controversial position, what that means is that, you know, Neither this position is 100% right, 
nor the opposite position is 100% wrong. Both, you can choose both the positions or any of the two positions. When you took any of the two positions, uh, you, you go either for the statement or against the statement. Uh, if you take both the positions, then your approach becomes in between. So this is what I am trying to uh, make clear to you through this slide. See here, no obvious right answer, no single authority everyone trusts. Then, how to deal with this? Dealing this kind of essay with facts or information to settle this controversy or to settle this dispute, this is a non-starter. In order to write this essay, if you merely bring facts, okay, if you merely bring information, then uh, you do not meet the generic requirement. You do not meet the generic requirement. What you need here is argument. And for that argument, you can you can bring facts or information. But bringing in facts and information without leading to argument, if you do that, your essay does not meet the generic requirement. Uh, you will not pass the exam. So keep this in mind. Very important. Okay, next thing. A matter of informed opinion. A matter of informed opinion and judgment for which writers must argue. Argue. You argue your position, it is like in a debate. You know, if two people are debating on a topic, both have a clear-cut positions and those positions can be quite contrary. And both of them argue their position very forcefully, very convincingly, very cogently. In this kind of essay, this is what you do. But when you do so, uh, you must display two things, your critical judgment and the fact that the things that you bring in uh, belong to the realm of informed opinion. Then fourth important thing is substantiation. This is the key word, substantiations. You must be able to substantiate your position. And for this substantiation, uh, you may need argument, you may need claim, you may need support, you may need counter argument. So these are some of the important features of a position argument essay. And uh, be aware of these features as you move on. So now you are ready. Having familiarized yourself with the features of a position argument essay, now you are ready to begin to understand the position argument statement. Okay, so let's look at bullet point number one. Bullet point num number one just gives us our topic. This is the given topic. This is the given topic. Then the rest of the bullet point gives us three steps. First, 
again first we should concentrate on the content words and what is meant by content word i had uh, made uh, you know its concept suffi sufficiently clear in my very first lecture content words are nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs the opposite of the content word is the function word function words are grammatical words like articles auxiliary verbs pronouns these things are function words are not important from the meaning point of view only content words are important from the meaning point of view so let us see which are the content words in this statement these are this is adjective customary this is noun uh, this is again noun and this is again uh, you know adjective and noun okay so there are four content words five content words actually there are only four because this modern life this modern life is actually modernity so once you have zeroed in on the content words then you substitute those words with synonyms this is the technique i had taught you in the uh, in the previous uh, on the uh, on the previous topic also the same thing the same technique you bring into play so customary here has been substituted with traditional or conventional you can substitute that word with traditional or conventional or established con conduct or even righteousness you know uh, you can substitute that customary with uh, you know these things sorry sorry this uh, not righteousness righteousness is morality morality is righteousness you can substitute righteousness with morality guide with teacher and modernity with new change so <clears throat> when you substitute the content words in this uh, wage then you translate the statement into your own words and you will get a statement something like this something like this established notions of virtue and vice cannot be guideline values in modernity which thrives not on conventional continuity but new change uh because the righteousness when you say righteousness what is right also implies what is wrong so morality is something that is that ha that that has direct connection with the notions of the right and the wrong and uh, customary means established so established notions of virtue and vice what is right and what is wrong the statement says cannot be guideline values in modernity because modernity moves forward not because of conventional continuity but because of new change progress okay so this is how you understand the given topic now that you have understood the given topic uh you must develop a position statement a position statement for yourself and how can you do that so let's learn that from this slide uh begin by explaining briefly but clearly to clarify the implicit issue so here you need to clarify the implicit issue Uh, if it is issue then it means that uh, there is not just one line there is also the opposite line 
and you, you must be clear about both the lines. Clarify both sides of the issue by hitting upon a, an antithesis. So what is the way of doing that? The way of doing that is hitting upon an antithesis. Antithesis means opposite view. Opposite view. And what is that opposite view? This is this is what makes it opposite view. Customary morality can be customary morality can be a guide to modern life. The statement says it cannot be. And the opposite view tells it can be. So this is how the statement becomes an issue. Now that the issue is clear to you, you are required to take a stand. So take a stand. Now your stand can be in favor of or to or this three. One, two, three. You can take any of the three stands. You can be in favor of the topic. You can go against the topic. Or you can take an in-between position. You may say, oh, okay, it, it looks good. It looks uh, truthful. Uh, but the opposite uh, part also looks truthful. So... Although I go by the statement, uh, I am not dismissing, dismissing it altogether. You can take that kind of in-between position also. But it is very important that you be clear about your standpoint. You know, you can take any either of these three standpoints. Thereafter, only thereafter you state your you state you give the thesis statement okay and this thesis what is the thesis statement this is a claim okay a thesis statement is a claim an argumentative statement in argumentative essay a thesis statement is a claim either in favor of the statement or against the statement or uh, related to the in-between position, that claim, when informed readers read, uh, and your examiner, your scorer will be one such informed reader, that claim should sound very convincing, cogently convincing to him or her. So only then your thesis will be, you know, effective. And all through, all through the essay, uh, you must be supporting, you must be, you know, strengthening your claim with a very convincing support. So always support your claim. So this is how you will develop the position argument. So now be familiar with, get acquainted with some of the technical th technical things uh, related to this essay. Uh, these technical things constitute the elements of argument, and you must be uh, clear about you know those technical words. These are claim one support. Two and assumption three. These are the three technical. These are technical words uh, which constitute the elements of an argument. Claim. What is a claim? A claim is a proposition or conclusion. A claim is a statement that you are trying to prove. That's claim. Okay, then how is the claim proved? 
क्लेम इज प्रूव्ड बाय प्रूव्ड बाय यूजिंग सपोर्ट यू सी दिस सपोर्ट यू प्रूव योर क्लेम बाय गिविंग सपोर्ट व्हाट इज सपोर्ट मीन वेल सपोर्ट कैन मीन फैक्ट ए एक्सपर्ट ओपिनियन बी सो इनफॉर्म्ड इंफॉर्मेशन एक्सपर्ट ओपिनियन टेलिंग वेरी टेलिंग इफेक्टिव एग्जाम्पल्स फ्रॉम एक्सपीरियंस दीज थिंग्स बिकम सपोर्ट टू योर क्लेम एंड द थिंग दैट लिंक्स द क्लेम टू द सपोर्ट In argumentative essay, this becomes very, 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 very. See how many times I am repeating the word that very, very, very important. And that very, very important thing is the assumption. It is the assumption that must link your support, which will be in the form of informed opinion, fact. or expert opinion or very telling telling or effective examples you know those kind of things which constitute the support to strengthen the claim must be bolstered by an assumption by a hypothesis so you see here when you wrote the earlier essay on an abstract abstract topic uh, this meticulous kind of attention was not required when you were trying to or when we were trying to substantiate our point but here you have to be meticulously careful uh, that whenever i bring a claim the claim uh, the claim must have a support and my hypothesis must provide a link between the support and the claim i make you understand this uh, thing with an example so this is the claim you see this is a problem uh, for high schools or for high school students high school students should be restricted to no more than 2 hours of tv viewing per day you know television is a major concern for high school teachers and uh, it is a major issue for high school students students who spend more than 2 hours of time watching television they do so only at the neglect of their studies so this is why uh suppose you are going to a school to get your uh, you know uh, relatives or your children get admitted in the school and the school principal tells you sir or madam uh please do not allow your children to watch television for more than 2 hours a, a day okay why should you buy this claim why should you buy this claim why should you you know go buy it because this claim has a support and what is that support let us see the support okay an important new study and the testimony of educational specialists revealed that students who watch more than 2 hours of tv a night have on average lower grades than those who watch less tv so there have been studies and there have been the experiences of the teachers and they have you know shared their experiences uh, in their writing whether published as a uh, as a book or uh, in the form of books or articles or opinions in newspapers okay studies are there opinions are there 
So if you bring things as I have done here, I have brought in things from a study and also I have brought in the opinions of the teachers. So these two things make my claim very effective. Sorry, my support very effective. And when my, when my support is very effective, effective here means credible. If my support is very credible, then it will very powerfully prove the claim. But there is a link. That link is the assumption or hypothesis. What is that link? See, this is the link. Excessive TV viewing, uh, TV viewing or watching adversely affects academic performance. So what is the assumption behind the claim which is based on that support? The, you know, the power, the power of the claim comes from the support. The support becomes very telling. But why the support becomes very telling? Because the support has an assumption which links the support to the claim. And the assumption is or the hypothesis is that excessive TV watching, what does it do? It kills uh, the or badly affects the academic performance of students. So in this way, whenever you bring a claim, you should have a support and the link between the claim and the support must be explicit with a placing of assumption or hypothesis. Then <clears throat> another requirement in argumentative synthesis essay is that you need to be consistently logical. There must be a very strong appeal of logic and part of that cogency of the logic or logical statement comes from you know uh, that uh, interrelationship between claim support and assumption which i talked about but there but here there are two technical things about this that you must figure out that you must know there are two kinds of logical statements. One is deductive logic or deductive argument and another is inductive logic or inductive argument. So let us understand what deductive logic is. You know, in my previous uh, very first class, I had uh, talked about this briefly and uh, promised you that I would be talking about it in a, in a comprehensive way uh, in next classes and uh, this is what I am doing today, giving you a very comprehensive information about logic. See, in deductive logic, there are three things. One is this generalization. Uh, second is a specific case. And this generalization, this is also generalization, this is also, and this is third conclusion. So your conclusion is your claim. Your conclusion is a claim. For example, here, claim is, Smita Sarma will die. Suppose Smita Sarma is your colleague. Right? When I say she is your colleague, her, her age may be uh, in the mid 20s. And uh, <laughs> uh, me telling you that somebody who is in the mid 20s will die, uh, it, it looks, uh, un it may look unpalatable to you. It may be difficult for you to, you know, check my claim as logical. But see how I am making it logical. Uh, first of all, what I do, 
step number one that I take is that I generalize this. I give a very generalized statement and that generalized statement is this. All living things die. Those who are born have to die one day. Okay? And then you, you come from the general to the specific. Give a specific statement. Now you give the specific. What is that a specific? This makes it a specific. A human being, a human being, because a human, a human being, being a living thing, dies. When all living things die one day, it is but natural that a human being will also die someday, one day. Therefore, now the conclusion or the claim. So, or therefore, Esmita Sarma, even if she is of 25 years of age or in her 20s, may die. Now, this claim looks very logical. So, when you are presenting your logic in this way, you are actually utilizing the appeal of deductive logic. And there is also another logic that is inductive. Ah. What happens in inductive logic? Well, here a speaker or writer argues inductively. What does that inductively means? Begins not with a generalization but with a question. But with a question. That contains an implicit hypothesis, a specific evidences, and the conclusion emerging therefrom. In inductive logic, we do not begin with a generalized statement as we did in deductive logic. Here we begin with a question. For example, this question, how did the living room window get broken? The living room window of your house got broken. And you ask the question, how did it get broken? Okay. And you try to answer that question with uh, evidence and that evidence in a way becomes the implicit hypothesis. So what is that evidence? Well, there is a cricket ball on the living room floor. You see the window broken, the window glass broken. And you also see a cricket ball in the living room. So what does that mean? What does that mean is that those people or children or players or uh, individuals who were playing cricket in the street, okay, while playing a sort, per perhaps one of the, you know, one of the sorts broke the window and this is why the ball is in the living room. So let's see, see the evidence here. There is a cricket ball on the living room floor. The ball was not there this morning. Some children were playing cricket in the street across the window this afternoon. They stopped playing a little while ago and they are not in the street lot now. So from this evidence, you come to the conclusion that one of the children, this is a conclusion, one of the children hit or threw the ball through the window because of which the window glass got broken and they all ran away. And then you come to the conclusion, the claim, the conclusive argument and the conclusive argument is this. One of 
दोज चिल्ड्रेन प्लेइंग क्रिकेट ब्रोक द लिविंग रूम विंडो सो इफ यू यू नो प्लेस योर आर्ग्यूमेंट इन दिस वे योर आर्ग्यूमेंट बिकम्स और योर आर्ग्यूमेंट कैरीज द अपील ऑफ इंडक्टिव लॉजिक नाउ when you are writing in the uh, you know argumentative uh, essay uh, depending on the flow of thought you can use deductive logic you can use inductive logic or you can use both um, you know sprinkle your uh, writing with both uh, patches of deductive logic and inductive logic even if you use only one kind of logic that is also okay doesn't matter much then we come to uh remember in my first lecture i told you that uh, rhetoric is also important if logic makes our essay cogent convincing the use of rhetoric makes our essay powerfully persuasive logic appeals to our mind and rhetoric appeals to our heart our emotions and a good writer uh, should also be able to cultivate the art of packing their writing uh, with emotions if you have participated in debates and those people who are very you know good at debating they not only use arguments but they also use rhetoric to make themselves persuasive so this is why i am here teaching you uh, giving you idea about rhetoric there are four kinds you know there are four devices in rhetoric these are kairos ethos logos and pathos i do not need to talk about logos because when i say logic this has already been discussed just Uh, with the help of previous three slides uh, just now i talked about logos so i do not need to talk about logos logos is a done part done thing kairos kairos means context ethos means ethics and pathos means emotion uh you really need not bother about kairos because the statement that you are given to write your essay on uh it is not necessary for you and it is not even possible for you to know the context in which that statement has come therefore uh, you should not uh, you know try to contextualize the statement do not do not do that because it is simply impossible for you know, to for you to know the right context so leave that just concentrate on these three and this i have already talked so this one ethos and pathos so here i am talking about ethos ethos is ethical appeal what does it say this ethical appeal is based on the ethical status of the person making the appeal this person carries high degree certain degree or high degree of credibility so in your argumentative synthesis essay if you are bringing in uh the views or the opinions or the claims or the statements of very renowned uh people say like einstein like mahatma gandhi or very renowned scholars like say ravindranath tagore um, or uh, 
Burton Russell, etc., etc. Okay. So if you quote from them, uh, because the statement of those persons uh, carry high degree of credibility, therefore, your essay, if you bring them, uh, your essay acquires the power of or takes on the power of ethical appeal. Uh, two examples I have given, like th this, uh, uh, this example, you, are, you may be very familiar because this is, uh, this uh, statement comes from that adver advertisement. A commercial about a specific brand of toothpaste says that four out of five dentists use it. If you have, uh, you might have seen this uh, Colgate toothpaste advertisement so many times when a doctor says that four out of five um, doctors in India recommend the use of Colgate, right? So, you know, this advertisement by thus mobilizing the ethical appeal becomes or sounds very credible to the consumer or to the audience. Look at the second one. A writer may so ethos through his or her tone. Sometimes you may uh, display or exhibit your ethos through your tone in your writing. Okay. Suppose you are somebody who has done uh, a lot for the beautification of your, say, your town or your village or your city or your street and uh, you are, you know, trying to be emotional and you can actually be very effectively uh, be emotional here, not for the appeal of emotion, but for the ethical appeal. See how, look, look, look at this example. A writer may show ethos through his or, or her tone, such as taking care to show more than one side of an issue before arguing for her side, when you use a counter argument to, to show an opposing, uh, opposing idea to an issue before explaining why your thesis is still correct, you use ethos. Uh, so suppose there is a drive in your city, there is a drive in your city to deforest the area to deforest the area for setting up, say, a power plant. And you are writing against it. That this, you know, trees should not be cut down. And you are somebody who have invested a lot in greening your city. So there, if you know, you bring the counter, if you, if you bring, if you just be emotional, you are so much emotionally invested and you say completely that your, uh, like your disagreement is completely valid without giving due consideration to the logic for building a power plant, uh, then you do not sound, uh, you know, logical. You do not sound persuasive. You become very strident. Very strident. But you can bring all the emotional appeal that comes out of your investment into greening the city. But, but if you give due, if you also buy the logic, if you also explain to your reader, okay, building a power plant 
is necessary for this, 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 this reasons. I can see why the government is trying to deforest and you know build a power plant over here. But still, this is how it is. Not a good thing. If you bring counter argument in this way, then you sound ethical. You know, you sound ethical. So ethics also means this thing. Then we come to appeal of pathos, appeal of emotion. What this appeal of emotion? Uh, you appeal to your appeal to your audiences, uh, their emotions, the audiences as emotions. And uh, some people say, "Oh, why to use uh, emotion suffused, uh, you know, statements in argumentative essay?" It is uh, not good. Some, some people may say so, but actually it is not so. It is actually very good that sometimes you also become emotional. The very example, you know, I was telling you before. Uh, look at this example, you know, see. I am not just invested in this community. I love every building, every business, every hard working member of this town okay so somebody is saying i know every flower i know every tree i know every bird because uh, i have invested so much in the greening of this city this kind of a statement you know only brings emotional power you know it, it invokes emotions in the readers but as I just said earlier, if you are able to balance this appeal of emotion with ethical appeal, then this very evocation of emotion adds high intensity to your essay. Your essay becomes uh, convincing and persuasive at the same time. So this is why here and there you should also bring in pathos but uh, you know in a very chastened controlled way. Then we come to the second section of our presentation today which is about the writing process on this topic. What is the topic? Again, customary morality cannot be a guide to modern life. This is the topic. And what is the writing process? As I told you in the last class, the writing process starts with brainstorming. And when you brainstorm, you do not, you just brainstorm, you just think out ideas. Right? The same technique which I taught you in the previous class, the same technique. Uh, you know, you apply the same technique over here. Just think out ideas on the topic. And when you think out ideas, do not list them. And that you do not list, that I have not listed my ideas over here. That is suggested by the bullet points on the left. And then after I had, uh, you know, uh, brainstormed the ideas, then I gave the ideas and order. The kind of this order I gave, I had a certain kind of a logic. Based on that logic, I gave order to this idea. So just first of all, just look at the idea. Local and not universal relief. Customary uh, morality is a matter of local relief, not universal relief. This is the idea, first idea that came to my mind. Ethical life of an actual society, which is ethical truth, is nothing but custom. So, custom is nothing but ethical ethical truth. And uh, visibility of this customary morality can be seen in uh, usages, codes, social institutions. And uh, this visibility gives us the notion of right or wrong. Um, 
doing something is right, doing something is wrong, wrong for vegetarian India. Uh, eating plant food is right, eating animal food is wrong. Right? For the Muslim, it may not be so. Rationality contradicts morality. A conservative habit hence cannot lead the way to modernity. Science makes morality look irrational. Popularity of astrology in India, despite remarkable knowledge of space science. Obedience to morality at the cost of rationality strengthens the regime of outmodedness and superstition. Love versus the social institution of marriage as an example of the contradiction between morality and modernity. Modernity needs its foil morality for its manifestation. Um, still, unacceptability of living relationships and divorces in India. A society as strong in customary morality resists change or modernity as categorical evil and a corruption of the community. Examples from the Arabian world. India marks a welcome departure from both Arabia and the postmodern West. Hindu notions of asceticism, self renunciation, and acceptable behavior in relations with others giving way to self discovery and self realization. And these things are a far cry in the West. Case of India shows that customary uh, morality, not idea, morality. Customary morality does not offer escape from its antinomy with modernity. Self-knowledge leads to moral wrestling whereby the useless is rejected and the useful is adopted. So in this way, 15 ideas flowed out of my mind when I brainstormed on this topic. Uh, as I said in my previous lecture, the number of ideas and the quality of ideas that flow out of your mind uh, is largely dependent on your experience, experience of your life as well as your reading experiences. You may not be able to come out with as many ideas as I have or uh, as you know powerful ideas as I have come, come up with. But doesn't matter. What matters is that you think of ideas and whatever ideas you hit upon, you give them a proper order and you depend on them. You trust your own ability. Trusting your, ability, uh, your own ability um, is a major step towards your success in your UPSC examination. Uh, okay. Now, right hand side, see, this two number idea I have grouped as one. And uh, first idea comes as idea number Two, idea number three in the order comes as three, idea number four comes as five, idea number five comes as four. So what I mean to say is that this is the order that I have given and there is a logic behind this ordering and this logic becomes clearer when I chunk these ordered ideas into paragraphs. So Paragraph 1, I have, for paragraph 1, I have taken ideas number 1 to 5 from that ordered list. These are, uh, as number 1, ethical life of an actual society whose ethical truth is nothing but local, uh, nothing but custom, local and not universal realm, visibility in usages, courts, institutions, engenders the notion of right and wrong may become a conservative habit and hence cannot lead the way to modernity. Rationality contradicts morality. So ideas number one to five from my ordered list, I have for paragraph number one. And why I have these ideas for paragraph number one? Because these idea point towards this main idea. Through these ideas, I have tried to give a definition, to provide a definition of customary morality, the nature of its operation, how does it operate, and its prima facie relationship with modernity. Uh, so these five ideas will prove this main idea of the first paragraph. Then again, for paragraph number two, I have ideas from number six to number 10. 
रैशनैलिटी कंट्राडिक्ट मोरलिटी लव वर्सेस द सोशल इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ मैरिज एज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द कंट्राडिक्शन बिटवीन मोरलिटी एंड मोडर्निटी स्टिल अनएक्सेप्टेबिलिटी ऑफ लिविंग रिलेशनशिप एंड डिवोर्सेस इन इंडिया ओबीडियंस टू मोरलिटी एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ रैशनैलिटी स्ट्रेंथन्स द रेजीम ऑफ आउट मोडर्डनेस एंड सुपरस्टिट्यूशन पॉपुलरिटी ऑफ एस्ट्रोलॉजी इन इंडिया डिस्पाइट रिमार्केबल नॉलेज ऑफ स्पेस साइंस सो दिस अनोदर सेट ऑफ फाइव आइडियाज दैट इज आइडियाज फ्रॉम नंबर सिक्स टू नंबर टेन आर बींग बॉबलाइज बाई मी इन ऑर्डर टू प्रूव दिस मेन आइडिया दिस इज द मेन आइडिया ऑफ पैराग्राफ टू बाइनरी ऑपोजिशन बिटवीन पैशन एंड रैशनैलिटी at the center of the autonomy antinomy between morality and modernity so there is clear cut antithesis or uh, antonymous relationship between modernity and morality and what is at the center of this antinomy the center of this antinomy is the polarity or the polarization between passion and rationality uh passion and rationality are contrary to each other okay and customary stickling upon customary morality makes us passionate about that thing rationality wants us to give that up passion wants us to stick to that and you know the at the that at the heart of this an antinomous relationship between modernity and morality lies the polarization between rationality and passion you know i am making clear that thing uh, so that the statement uh, becomes uh, critically analytically very illuminating and very hence very you know logical then for paragraph number 3 i am using just two ideas ideas from 11 to 12 a society as strong in customary morality resists change or modernity as categorically evil and a corruption of the community and i examples that i have are from the arabian world and i gave a contrasting example of india india marks a welcome departure from both arabia and the post modern west hindu notions of asceticism self renunciation and acceptable behavior in relations with others giving way to self discovery and self realization a far cry in the west first of all let me make these uh, two ideas clear to you before i go to the main idea so see Uh, we see three trends one is the western trend what is the west west attitude to modernity the west claims itself to be very rational they they dabble in materiality very strongly they dabble in uh, materiality they lead a very strong material life therefore morality does not matter in the west and the result is that the west today calls itself a post modern society and they define post modernity uh as something he which is okay okay with the decline of morality with the loss of morality okay so we have this one west at one point we have the west at its opposite extreme point is the arabia you know arabia muslim arabia you know in countries like saudi arabia and you know even united arab, arab uh, uae and you know other gulf countries 
बिकॉज ऑफ द मनी ऑफ द वायल यू मे सी अ फिजिकल प्रेजेंस ऑफ मॉडर्निटी देयर वेरी वाइड रोड्स वेरी लार्ज बिल्डिंग्स यू नो बट सो फार एज आउटलुक इज कंसर्ट देयर आउटलुक इज स्टिल स्टिप्ट इन कस्टमरी मुस्लिम मोरालिटी सो ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी अरेबिया स्टैंड एट एक्सट्रीम वॉट यू से पॉइंट इफ वेस्ट इज एट द एक्सट्रीम पॉइंट ऑफ रैशनैलिटी अरेबिया इज एट द एक्सट्रीम रिवर्स यूर ऑपोजिट एक्सट्रीम पॉइंट ऑफ ऑर्थोडॉक्स मोरालिटी Where does India come in? India comes in between. India occupies a hybrid space. We are very receptive to modernity, but we are not averse to customary morality. We inhabit. a hybrid space a third space which is neither 100% uh, like that of the rational west and not that like that not like that of the orthodox arabian it's the in between space and based on you know these two ideas i have this main idea this main idea is third space that india occupies both unlike arabia and the west is an inimitable model of adaptation to morality unique kind of adapt india's approach to both modernity and morality is actually a unique kind of adaptation to modernity so this idea i am trying to prove through this paragraph and then we come to the fourth and the final paragraph of uh, final body paragraph of our essay and he, for this i have selected three ideas ideas from uh, sorry 13 not 11 13 to 15 13 14 15 uh what are these ideas these are case of india shows that customary idea does not offer escape from its antinomy with modernity self knowledge leads to moral wrestling whereby the useless is rejected and the useful is adopted modernity need, needs its foil morality for its manifestation and based on these three idea i have uh, this main idea morality and modernity needs need each other just think if there would have been no ram sorry i put it the wrong way if there would have been no ravan would there have been the importance and all the implications that that importance carries the importance of ram so what makes ram meaningfully workable is the presence of his foil ravan okay so <laughs> in the same way modernity needs morality that is my logic and by bringing in this logic in this paragraph with the help of these three ideas actually uh, i am um, finally proving my stand point that despite the antimony between morality and modernity morality can still be a guide to modernity okay so this is how i have conceptualized this essay and 
based on this conceptualization, I have this structure of the essay. This is the structure. Uh, before you start writing, be very clear. Make a mind map of the structure in your mind before you start writing. So you can utilize this, this, this slide as a mind map. This is my thesis statement. Despite the antinomy between customary morality and modern life, the former can still be a guide to the latter. This is what I am trying to prove. And this thesis statement I prove uh, with the help of three main ideas. One main idea is this. Another main idea is this. And this is the third main idea. With the help of three main ideas of the body paragraphs, I proved that thesis statement. Body paragraph number one, what does it do? It, you know, discusses the polarization between passion and rationality as dramatizing the antinomy between morality and modernity. And then body paragraph number two talks about India's uh, third space, which uh, comes out as a unique model of adaptation to mod uh, you know, modernity. And I pounce upon the idea in that paragraph to arrive at a new idea in paragraph number three, which is uh, morality and modernity need each other. And then I come to the conclusion. So this is how I have conceptualized the essay. Now, when you talk of conclusion of uh, an argument synthesis essay, uh, like the previous essay, uh, we do more or less the same thing. In the previous essay, we said that we should give a recommendation kind of a statement. We should round off with a recommendation kind of a statement. That is the only thing we do not do. Uh, while concluding an argumentative essay. Otherwise, other things are the same. Okay, so now I come uh, to the end of my lecture today. Uh, in my next lecture, I will show you the whole draft of the essay. And I, uh, as in the, you know, as I did with the previous topic, I will analyze my draft to further uh, make you internalize the elements at work in the writing of an essay on this topic uh, in the mode of argument synthesis so that you are able to learn the craft, learn the art of the craft of writing an argumentative essay. So see you in the next class. Thank you.